And our one-on-one -on -one brought to you by AT&T Digital Life. Jimmy, a grab for the Florida Gators. Don't let the grind get you down tonight. Sounds like the title of a country song here in Nashville, but every coach and every team right now are trying to grind their way through February, and that was Billy Donovan's one of his concerns tonight. How are we going to handle just how this month is starting to take its toll on everybody for Vanderbilt? Handle the press and make threes. That's the key to this ball game. When Florida puts their press on, what will Vanderbilt do against it, and can they get loose on the back end and knock down some long ball? Let's take a look at the starting lineup. Jimmy already talked about this. He trusts his seniors. That's because there's four of them out there. Wilbick and Frazier, Prather, you get, and Patrick Young for the Gators. For the hometown Commodores of Vanderbilt, a very short bench. They'll play seven guys. They have to play walk-ons to start with, though. It's Fuller and Dejon Parker in the backcourt. Siakam, Odom, and Jones are up front. Billy Donovan, this is the fourth time he's had a number one team. Kevin Stallings is a winning as coach in Vanderbilt history. 20 plus wins, five of the last seven seasons. A lot of respect between these two guys, Stallings and Donovan. And we saw that and heard that from both coaches today. Coming in, Billy is seven and nine in this building. It's not easy at Memorial Gym. Shannon made that pretty clear. I think of the last five times there was a number one team here. Jimmy, we were here for four of them. And some of them didn't do very well. And that's something about this building, and that's what Shannon was talking about. And right now, even though it's an early start, it's only five minutes after six central time in Nashville. This place is already rocking, and it's full. That's what Kevin Stelling talked to us about earlier today, that the memorial magic at some point has to kick in in this ball game to elevate his team. And you see that a lot of times. A lesser team, in this case, Kevin Stallings' guys are outnumbered, but they're not outmanned. That's been their motto all season long. Florida has won 19 in a row. Their last loss, as you talked about, was December 2nd at UConn. Does it finally just catch up to them? It caught up to Syracuse last week. Right. Could it catch up to Wichita State later tonight? I don't think so. But at some point, the pressure of number one, the winning streak, does it finally just get to you? Four key seniors, though, for Billy Donovan to go to work with. That's why we call it Super Tuesday. We find those answers out in the next four hours. Doug Childs to throw it in the air with Pat Adams and Mike Kitts, the other two officials. And Vandy, the first handle with Kyle Fuller at the point. Again, at least to share the SEC regular season crowd at hand tonight at Florida wins because they've got a three-game lead with four to play. And they're perfect at 14-0 in the conference. Jones squares up and comes up short. And the rebound off to Michael Frazier. Florida covered all the action. The back screen, the down screen, the staggered screen. Vanderbilt ran everything that they wanted to. They did not run a ball screen. I think that's out of respect for the Florida ball screen defense. Prather on a drive. Put it up high on the window. And he got a piece of it. And it's going to be out of bounds to the Commodores. He gets so much done. Casey Prather off of two bounces. Seldom. Does this cat dribble himself into that third or fourth bounce? Very efficient. Not a big outside shooter at all. That's his game that we just saw there, though he didn't score. That's what Florida will try to do with him tonight. A little different press breaker look by Vanderbilt. Normally, Rod Odom is the takeout guy, but Kevin Stalling is trying to get his shooter loose on the back end. Odom, one of the better three-point shooters at 6'9", anywhere in the country. Vandy turns it over. First miscue of the night by Jones. Yeah, we talk a ton about teams being unselfish on the offensive end. Florida is an unselfish club on the defensive end. They really cover up for each other in that area. Florida does likewise. Turns it back over to the middle bit. Baseline jumper. Backside rebound, a good one by Frazier. We'll drop it in to where you get. You get the spin and off the window short. Neither team able to find the basket so far. Florida club that doesn't shoot great from the three-point line, only making six per game. The second fewest in terms of the 18 years that Billy Donovan's been at Florida. They are a two-point scoring club. And Florida. Found himself in no man's land. Jumped up, turned to try to fire it back to a teammate. There was nobody home. Wilbekin had a momentarily open look at a three. Didn't take it. 
Here's Young. Nice pass from Leggett. They can just brute strength you in front of the rim. The inside tandem of Yaget and Patrick Young, so good and powerful. Vandy hold up with the Young inside team. Here the backcourt pressure is getting to four. Gonna have to hustle. Ten second call. I'm not sure Fuller and Dejon Parker are terrific at attacking pressure, and Billy Donovan has seen it on film. He's gonna go at these guys, and again, Kevin Stallings, a little bit of a gamble, taking one of his better handlers, Rod Odom, putting him on the back end of the press, hoping that they can get him loose for a shot. He said, we want Jones dunking on one end or Odom taking a quick shot if we can break the press, but not if they do it like they just try that time. Young, left hand too strong, and four will bring it up. Already three turnovers and without a field goal so far. Not a combination you like. Again, not one. There's the first ball screen set by Vanderbilt in this game. And they turn it over again. Four turnovers and no field goals. Kick out, Frazier let his man go by. Extra pass to Prather again. And the rebound, Siakam. Really pretty tight defense by Vanderbilt. Florida just a little hesitant, turned on a pretty good three in the corner. Parker, who had five threes, and went over the weekend over Auburn as the Commodores had to come from way behind. They were down 16 in the first half of that game and found a way to win with their walk-ons. Played a good number of minutes. Shot clock winding down. Fuller, off balance, got it. At times, Fuller will dribble the mess out of the basketball. Sometimes six, seven, eight times, but he is maybe the one guy that can go get his own shot against good defense. You took that line from Patrick Young. Young Patrick absolutely. Young said he will dribble the mess out of the yeah. basketball. I said, I like it. I'm going to use it. <laughs> Robokin for three. And a one-handed man rebound by the Ooh. aforementioned Patrick Young. One of those big, strong arms that I tweeted out earlier today of Patrick Young. Took a picture of him. His this guns is. look just like yours. Yeah, absolutely. Almost the same bicep. Florida. 4-2 lead on Young's four points. Two and had to score the final eight points of the game to win it. The rest of those teams lost here at Memorial Gym. So far, low scoring up there. Patrick Young, four. And Kyle Fuller, two. Brett Vanderbilt has struggled to score all season long. Only 66 points a game. That's 13th in the SEC. Yeah, but 41% of the attempts by Vanderbilt are from the three-point line. That's why Billy Donovan says, chase him off the three. Can Vanderbilt make enough twos in this game to beat us? There will be a time when the threes start to drop. They always do, especially on their home floor for Vanderbilt over the years. They don't necessarily have a John Jenkins type guy right now, but Rod Odom, the guy that's dribbling right now, if you get him free and get him in a groove, he can knock a few down. Here's a runner off the window by Dejon Parker. And we've got something going off of their ball screen action. It's the third one set in that half court series. Florida switch the first two. Prather drives up high. No foul called. And out of bounds to Vanderbilt. Let's check in with Shannon. Well, the Florida Gators do have one player sitting on the bench here today because of injury. That's Casey Hill. It's actually the third game that he's missing, guys. He got a groin injury at Kentucky. Now, we saw him at shoot-around today. He did a light shoot-around, but I was told by the team that it was a trainer's decision to have him sit out tonight. Well, that takes away their 6-1 freshman. Talented player. And it puts a lot of pressure on Wilberton to handle this game major minutes without foul trouble. Exactly. Billy Donovan has to like what he's seen out of his full court press drive. Vanderbilt has not burned them yet. Here's Jones up and under with a left hand. This kid's going to be terrific. You go back and watch the Kentucky game in this building. He was the best post player on the floor that night. And just like that, Florida takes the lead back. Eddie Smith's three. 
his 25th of the year. One of the signs of elite teams like Florida, do you have starters that come off the bench? Chris Walker could start for a bunch of people. Casey Hill could start for a bunch of people, and so could Finney Smith. Odom rimmed out a three. It's Frazier on the rebound. Here comes Wilbekin. Trying to feed the post, and I think you get pushed off. He did. Well, Vanderbilt doesn't have enough offensive firepower to not get a good look throughout most of this ball game. They have started off extremely sloppy. Yes, Florida's defense is locked in on all the action that Vanderbilt's trying to run. The really unforced turnovers by Vanderbilt to start this game. And the full court pressure of Florida has bothered Vanderbilt. And he has not beaten the pressure and gotten clean looks on the back end. Not yet. This time they break it beautifully. And they get Odom open for a triple. And that's the gamble right there. That's the chess match within the chess match. Billy Donovan's going to extend his press. Kevin Stallings is going to gamble and take one of his better handlers, the best shooter on the back end, and Odom makes him pay. Exactly what Kevin talked with you and I and Shannon about today. And it comes to fruition with Odom hitting his 76th three-pointer of the year. Before the shot, a foul. And that's going to be on Siakam. Now, Rod Odom only 6 out of 27 from 3 over his last three ball games. But again, you get it to the third side of the floor, just like attacking a zone defense in the quarter court against the full court press. Start on one side to the second side. The shooter's open on the third side. Splash by Vanderbilt. Odom is not afraid to take those threes. Never has been, even when you go back to his freshman year. Here's Finney Smith missing. Young trying to keep it alive and does. Nice save by Young on the baseline. Similar hustle that we saw from Patrick King in Tennessee two weeks ago. Yeah, they hit the deck going to the corner to save one. And a foul on Siakam again. That's two quick ones in a row. And again, Kevin Stallings does not have a very long bench, but he's going to go to Shelby Motes right now. Kevin Stallings has lost four projected starters since the end of last year. And for him to be 7-7 seven and seven in this league with seven scholarship guys, a tremendous, tremendous job of Kevin Stallings this year. Young forces one up. Drew the foul from Jones. That'll be his first. Here's what Jimmy was talking about. And look at all those guys would have been starters. Well, Josh Henderson lost uh, for the season on December 5th. Got hurt against Marshall. McClellan dismissed violation of team policy. But it goes back to last year. And all those guys would be seeing significant minutes, if not starting. Yeah, Keegan Johnson was their best player last year. And Eric McClellan was his best player this year through the first semester. That's how big of a hit they have taken. Jones is going to go to the bench as well for oh, Vanderbilt. He left his feet before Patrick Young left his feet. A young shot blocker took the bait. Patrick Young has done a nice job at the free throw line over the past year. He's worked hard at it. Knocked down both. He's got six of Florida's nine. All the way in and a dunk underneath by Luke Cornett. Very well done by Fuller. The one guy, the best driver, that can just beat pressure with speed. Fuller was it. And Fuller just, he's going to say, you're going to press me? Okay, I'm fine with that. He keeps the ball in the middle third of the floor and lets his speed take over. The best, break, best press breaker so far by Vandy has been Fuller off the speed bounce. The reason for the stoppage in play was the shot clock to be reset at 33. It was not a foul call as Pat Adams put up three fingers on each hand and we finally got the message. Vanderbilt by two. Benny Smith, air ball to the back side. Didn't touch the rim. Shot clock. At seven, Wilberkin, jumper, got it. Now, MVP of the SEC right now is Scotty Wilberkin. And every coach will tell you the same thing. He can dominate the game, Wilberkin can, Brad, with his toughness. Very few people in the college game I would describe like that. And again, pressure getting to four. And this is going to be a coast-to-coast -coast slam for Dejan, uh, for uh, Casey Prather, rather. 
Brett Again, a costly turnover. Yeah, Foles got to keep the ball in that middle third of the floor. Florida regains the lead by two on the pull-up by Scotty Wilberkin with a shot clock winding down. And then Casey Prather gets the turnover, the steal, and the flush. Florida by Deuce. Last night, he called me, and the point guard for Wichita State, and he said they're a tighter ball club this year than they were last year that went to the Final Four. Mm -hmm. And I said, how about the pressure of going unbeaten? He said, you know what? Hasn't phased us because our coaches treat us every day like it was the first day of practice. And, and to me now, that, that's a good sign of a hungry, driven ball club. And I think at least two of those three things are going to come true. UConn on the women's side, Wichita State on the men's side, they will be unbeaten when that NCAA tournament starts. Don't forget, Wichita State's on ESPN2 tonight as their quest for perfection continues. Missouri Valley showdown with Bradley, 9 o'clock on ESPN2. And of the, of the unbeaten teams, of the latest unbeaten teams since 85 when the uh, tournament field expanded. I think it's 11 times the last remaining unbeaten team has gone to the Final Four. Only a couple of them have won it. Florida was one of those, as a matter of fact. You know, and, and don't give up on Syracuse winning the whole thing as well. I know they've struggled a little bit. To me, they look tired. Uh, Shannon saw them Saturday night. Uh, that, that's still a team where that zone defense is going to be a big deal now in that NCAA tournament. There's another turnover, and can Florida make Vandy pay again? Wilbur had a notion. Benny Smith, and he's found his way to the rack by Odom. Grab Florida this year. They will turn down a decent three in early shot clock to get themselves to a drive. That's not always been what Florida does. There's a pretty good look by Wilbekin. Could have, could have shot an early shot clock three. Then watch, boom. There's another pretty good look. But again, the driving ability of Florida is why they're number one. Their ability to get fouled, their ability to put pressure on you and get you in foul trouble, reverse the ball to drive instead of reverse the ball for threes this year. Well, in the last four or five years, there was, what, three or four years ago that Florida shot more threes than anybody in the country, yeah. and now they shoot less than most teams in the country. So... They've changed their approach, and as you said, I think in the open, Billy Donovan teams can beat you in a lot of different ways. This is a team that is not highly ranked in a lot of the SEC statistical categories, yet as a whole, they're number one, and they still haven't been beaten in Southeastern Conference play. Yeah, absolutely. And they can play half-court man, they can play half-court zone. They can full-court man, full-court zone. They can get in a running game or a grinded out game. They can make enough threes and they can tire you at the two. And they love to play defense. And they just forced another turnover playing defense. And again, an unselfish defensive club Kevin Stallings is up against tonight. They rotate. They cover up each other's mistakes. They talk loud. And that gamble right now by Kevin Stallings to have his better ball handlers but better shooters on the back end is not paying off. That's the fourth time they've turned it over because of Florida's press. Matt Young in a double team, got his own miss, going back up and under. Strong move by the big guy. Well, he will wear you out if you let him wear you out. You're going to get away with two or three push-offs of ball game and the ball's up on the rim, and you just have to adjust to it and play through it. Fuller almost walked again. We do get it into the front court to Parker. I see no pressure put on Florida's half-court defense after they broke the press. Florida on a 7-0 run right now. Oh, Fuller's got to off that ball screen. Odom too strong on a three. That Fuller is so good off the ball screen, he's got to come off of it, make him look something happen, make him for something to happen. And now Florida knocks down a three in the push of Michael Frazier. He's third in the conference in threes and also third in three-point percentage. And all of a sudden, it's an eight-point ball here in Florida's favor. He works it around the perimeter and then misses a three in the corner from Fuller. Wilbur can try to find a handle. Nice hustle by Moats, but it's going to be called it over and back, and there goes another turnover. And that is nine on the Commodores. You know, you look at Patrick Young, Brad. He doesn't have great hands still, and he doesn't have a great touch, but he's become a good college basketball player because you trust his effort, you trust his motor. See the nudge that I'm talking about? 
you just have to play through that. He's going to use his upper body strength to move you out of the way. And if you don't get a low, strong base, it's going to continue to happen. He's gotten better and better every year. And we congratulate him also on being an academic All-American. How about that? Well, he's what's right about college basketball and college athletics. The most popular dude on Florida's campus is Patrick Young. Wilbekin gave it up. Prater drives. Well, he can fly, but he missed in roots. And it's been physical under there. And a quick timeout called by Kevin Stallings right on that baseline. So we'll take a 30-second timeout here. 8.46 remaining in the half. Florida's opened up an eight-point lead. A 10-0 run to take a 19-11 lead with 8.46 remaining in the half. Kevin Stallings hasn't used a lot of ball screen action so far in this game. The reason why you break Florida down on defense, Brad, they have the rare ability to down a ball screen and then switch it out or hard hedge it or corral it the second time in the same possession. And that's the respect that Kevin Stallings has for Billy Donovan's defense. And on the tie-up, Florida's going to get it again. So coming out of a timeout, basically, in essence, another Commodore turnover. And they just can't figure out the Florida pressure right now. And until they do, they're going to continue to find themselves in a hole. And as Kevin Starling told us today, Billy's going to press me for a while. If it works, he'll continue. If it doesn't, he'll back off. Right now, it's working, and so is the offense for Florida. Frazier with another three. And it's a 13-0 run. Which is almost like Vanderbilt just a sigh of relief once they beat, beat the press. Again, not putting any early stress on Florida's half-court defense. All right, when you turn it over five of the last six trips, it is a sigh of relief really just getting into the front court. And again, swarming Florida defense even when Vanderbilt does get it there. Odom's just going to pull up and try to right for one, and that'll help the cause. Rod Odom's second three. Yeah, because he's 6'8", he can make some guarded shots, and he's going to have to make Probably three or four more guarded three-point shots in this game for Vandy to have a chance. We look by Vanderbilt's defense. That's a, a two-three that shapes up into a one-three-one. One. It's the old North Carolina point zone, is what it is. Young got it in low and got it to go again. He's just muscled, and I mean muscled, his way for eight of his ten points. The other two came at the free throw line. Joseph's in there, a walk-on, who saw considerable action with a win over Auburn. Parker got his man of the air. Good ball fake. Got it. And yeah, Prather lost his discipline. This is a very disciplined Florida defense. A good sell of the shot fake, a really bad discipline and lack of by Casey Prather. Prather almost lost the handle and then tried to get it to Leggett on the baseline. To Prather, rather, and he couldn't handle it. So Florida turns it over, but they do have an eight-point lead. Kevin Stallings will talk. Thank you, Coach. And that's been the story of the game, that and turnovers. As Shannon said, double figures already, and Florida's got ten points off those. Remember what uh, Kevin's dealing with in terms of Patrick Young is a 245-pound man that carves out space. He controls entry passes. And he gets the ball up on the rim, then he'll attack the miss. See if they can make something happen with him on the bench right now. Florida doesn't give up many points in the paints. Vanderbilt doesn't score many points in the paints. And that's been evident so far here tonight in the first half. Florida switching a lot of the ball screen action early in this game. Odom, fadeaway, tough shot. Too tough. If a congested fadeaway jumper is all Vandy can muster, they're going to have a hard time. They're going to have an eight-point deficit with six points, uh, six minutes to go in the first half. Yeah, really, Vandy, you look at their numbers, they're, they're kind of an average shooting ball club, and average shooting teams can't take average shots. They've got to get really good looks in this game. Yeah, that was a good look by Finney Smith, but he knocked it down. 
And full court heat from the Gators. Boy, well, doing a good job of forcing a lot of deep first catches by Vanderbilt in their press offense. Right on that 94-foot mark, almost out of bounds when they catch it. It's funny, that familiar Kevin Stallings whistle has me looking back to the yep. bench every time. That's how he relays things to his players. And they're playing offense on that end of the floor, and his bench is on the other. And whistle and a foul. And that's going to be on Will Yagets. That'll be his second. Another Thursday night showcase doubleheader coming up on ESPN, 7 o'clock. Julius Randle in Kentucky hosting Arkansas at 9. Iowa on the road to take on Indiana. Busy week. It's a grind, as Jimmy said, for everybody right now. Thursday night showcase presented by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups, part of Bracket Builder Week. Doubleheader Thursday night. Nice entry pass from Dejon Parker to Damian Jones. Had a huge opportunity for Arkansas Thursday night. And they're trying to creep their way into that NCAA tournament. Yes, the SEC is not the most powerful league in the country, but ask UCLA how good Missouri is. Ask SMU, ask, ask SMU about Arkansas. Virginia, ask them about Tennessee. Yeah, no doubt. Here's Wilberton, pull up three. Nice rebound by Shelby Moats. Now Bandy looking to push it a little bit. Put it back to Damian Jones, who hit his last shot. And he's going to the free throw line for a couple more. Fouled by Chris Walker. An interesting Florida doesn't double down on Damian Jones. In Florida, typically, they are the aggressor when the ball gets to the low block. They will come monster with a big to a big. They will scrape down on the uh, initial bounce of the ball, or sometimes they have to back trap it off of a, of a cutter. At that time, they allowed a Walker just to man up against Jones, and Jones wins the battle. I said whether or not Vanderbilt could close the gap a little bit with Patrick Young off the floor. They closed it to eight, but here comes Patrick Young and Casey Prather back on for Florida. A key building block for Kevin Stallings, this young kid, just a freshman. Came down to Vanderbilt, LSU, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Duke, Syracuse, Kansas. A Baton Rouge native, yeah. in fact, and was Louisiana's 5A player of the year. He's got five, and the lead cut to seven. Open look again. This time, Penny Smith's off the mark in the rebound. Carter Josephs. Again, Vandy completely a perimeter game right now as they work it around. The floor of the defense. And Moats got an open look. Got it for three. Crowd loving it. The junior who sees limited playing time with a huge three-pointer there. Patrick Young's left-hand hook. Nice rebound by Prater, but a foul before he got that shot. It's going to be on Vanderbilt, but it will be a four-point game as we go to the break. 3.50 remaining in the half. And this well, it's a good thing. Thank you. All right, Jimmy Joe, take us to the Telestrator. Well, Brad, every coach in this league has great respect for Kevin Stallings in the half-court offense. And watch what happens here. Kevin Stallings, this is the third ball screen hold it that he sets in this one possession. Now, Florida's going to corral it, and Shelby Motes is just going to pop right out of the corral action into a three-point shot. He sets it. There's the corral, the throwback, and the open look. Kevin Stallings has a counter now for what Billy Donovan is trying to do with his ball screen defense. That's only the fifth three-pointer by Shelby Motes all year. And that company with a turnover at 335 as Vanderbilt back try to cut it to two. Josephs, nice job. Getting it over for a decent look by Jones, who missed the outside jumper. Well, the one you had to make is that time Florida was downing the ball screen, and they slipped the guy out to the middle of the floor. you got to make the wide-open 16-footer. Here's Young. Faces the basket, and now... On that move that normally ends up with a hook shot. Dropped it to Finney Smith and then outside to Devin Walker. And Walker knocks down a three. I bet he made one with his feet were kind of not, 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 not aligned. He'd already stepped into his shot when he caught it. Odd footwork, but good release. 
Now Joseph's through traffic. Here's a wide open look for Odom. He doesn't miss too many of those, but kept alive by Moats. That would have been an ugly turnover by Fuller. Not that any of them have been that pretty so far in the first half for Vanderbilt. Well, they are fortunate, Vandy, to just be down seven, wouldn't you say? Yep, for sure. Fuller in traffic. Not a smart move against the strongest guy on the floor. Another turnover and a foul to boot on Kyle Fuller. Florida, when you take a look at their tournament resume, 25 and 2, perfect in conference play. Basketball power index at 2 and the RPI at 3. Brad, you're looking at a Florida team and part of our bracket builder week that's you know trying to hang in that bracket when it comes out as a number one seed. And I think they're they're heading that direction. The blueprint to beat these guys that we have not thrown up on the board yet. Four key seniors. No, no uh, weakness about how they play. And when they're at their best, they can win the whole thing. That's what you look for. And remember, there are two losses. And now Florida turns it over to the walk. There are two losses on the road at Wisconsin and UConn. And they're both pretty good teams, including Wisconsin, which we'll see against Indiana, part two of our Super Tuesday tonight. Currently, there's the seating in the SEC, according to Joan Lenardi. And, and key as well, when Florida lost his two ball games, they didn't have Scotty Wilbekin at Wisconsin and didn't have Scotty Wilbekin the last couple of minutes at UConn. Hurts, nice cross court pass to find Parker open. Got it. Dejan Parker. Lead cut to four again, but a foul. This one's going to be on Carter Josephs. Well, better ball movement by Vanderbilt over the last five or six minutes. Moats is a 6 8 left hander. Has the vision to seal the top of the long arms of the Florida defense. And a good job by Parker to kind of slide into the vision of Moats. Ball delivered right in the shot pocket. And for all the turnovers Vandy's had, they're down four. They've got four threes, Jimmy. And you said in the open, get 9, 10, 11, you're in the hunt. Absolutely. They're not quite halfway there, but they're in the hunt, down four. You know, Vanderbilt makes a basket, and they run back and get their defense set, right? but they can't guard the ball. I think that's the other part of this equation for Vanderbilt tonight. Get back, guard the ball, and have gap protection. That time they did not. Frazier, the best free throw shooter on this Florida team. And that's one thing that, if they get it in the hands of the wrong people, could hurt them somewhere down the line. But actually, all of them have improved. Patrick Young's up to 61%. He gets up to 65%. And while those don't sound great, just as I say that, Frazier misses them. And we're down to one minute. Remaining first half. Kevin Stallings trying to make Florida cover screening action. Throwing in a couple of ball screens, but a lot of screening action off the ball. Jones against Young. Double team now. He's in trouble. Throws it up there, and it almost went in. And now Florida can slow it down here. As there's only about a... Six second difference in the game clock and the shot clock before yeah. halftime. Anything done in basketball off balance is not done at a high level. And Jones took an off balance tough two. Wilbekin's just going to dribble out there until about maybe nine seconds. Actually, he's going to work right now with a Patrick Young screen. And now seven to shoot. Wilbekin fadeaway jumper. Really tough off the window. Wow, that was huge. Vandy's got a chance at the buzzer. And they come up short. Boy, Wil Wilbekin, how many times has he done that this year? Put a dagger in you right when you think you're in great shape. Patrick Young had the best first half. But how about this shot? Just creating one on his own by Scotty Wilbekin. Brad, it's, it's his toughness. At the end of the day, it's his toughness that beats you. 32-25 at the break. Chris and Seth and Jay standing by with the Mazda halftime report, guys.
Thank you, Brad. Mazda halftime report. His offense. He uses his best shooters as screeners to get guys free. They've made four so far. If Vanderbilt can get to that 10 or 11 mark in terms of made three-point shots, the Memorial Magic might take over. That was a big shot by Scotty Wilbekin just before the buzzer to end the half, or it would be closer than it is right now. It's kind of their go-to play. Florida will get Scotty Wilbekin in, in the alley or the pro slot is what I call it, where the pro, pro lane line is. Russell Westbrook is so good because you can go right or left off of that angle. Parker. I don't know if somebody got a piece of that or if he just short-armed it. But it's an air ball, and Florida will bring it down. Frazier got an open look. Rebound underneath, young again, this time blocked by Jones, and Jones pulls it down. Nice defense by the freshman. Every time he's near that three-point line. Florida corralling the ball screen action again. Just a, That's just an unforced turnover by Vanderbilt. Drive you nuts if you're a coach. That's just sloppy. Let's check in with Shannon. Well, Jimmy, you mentioned earlier that the motto for this Vanderbilt team all season has been outnumbered but not outmanned. Well, Patrick Young has done a pretty good job, at least in the first half, of outmanning them, and that is exactly what Kevin Stalling said. He said, we've got to do a better job on Patrick Young, so expect to see some help on him. But he did mention the 52 percentage of the field goals pretty much kept them in the game, and he said, you know, we got some really good looks. That they did, and talk about Patrick Young all the time and being the muscle of this Florida team. Five on the shot clock by Wilbur and he is stripped to the basketball. Two on one now. And the slam by Asiaga. There's a much needed transition basket by Vanderbilt. Kevin Stalling has not given Florida a steady diet, Brad, of anything on the defensive end. They've played man, they've played some zone. Trying to keep Florida out of any natural rhythm. And a shot of juice by Vanderbilt off of a turnover. One of the few they've had this game so far in terms of Vanderbilt forcing a turnover. And then Siakam with a finish. And they just forced another one, but they just gave it back in the form of you get. And an easy lay in underneath by Frazier. And if you don't own your spot against Florida, they will chew you up. It's almost like they can sense it. Their full court pressure has raised havoc with the Commodores tonight. And this one, the trap there, and then no place to go. And you get just steals it. Yeah, trying to step through. Didn't have a strong lower base. The base was too wide. Siakam runs right into Prater. Even when it looks like they're going to have an easy time getting the front court, they don't. Second time that's happened tonight. Kevin Stalling saying the ball was tipped, but 25 second clock was, has gone off. No change of possession. And there's that tonight what Florida's done when they pressed 18 times. Look at that, Brad. Seven wow. turnovers forced out of the 18 times they've slapped it off. No wonder you stay in it for those numbers. Wilbekin all the way through traffic, then found an open you get. And a foul on Jones. Kevin Stalling told Shannon the key in the second half is to get control of Patrick Young, and so far that has not come to fruition. He absolutely will wear you out with his ability to carve space. And you see his lower body just steps into Jones, and right now that's a grown man against a very talented but young and thin young man. Real looking. Drops it off to Young. He takes a jumper very seldom does he face the basket and do that. Young getting it done in a variety of ways tonight. Kevin Stallings is telling us today, I really admire Patrick Young. He's made himself a basketball player, and Billy Donovan has helped him become the player he is. 
you said earlier, not the greatest hands, not the greatest feet, not a great shooter. There's a three-pointer. That's a second of the night for Parker, and he's got ten. That great, great offensive patience by Vanderbilt. Because Florida had them down in the action on the ball screen twice within that possession, and they fought their way out of it to reverse the ball to an open three. And Florida was really good, and finally they set a ball screen to kind of clip off Scotty Wilbekin and get the ball reversed to the far corner. And you're going to have to have that kind of patience and that type of moxie about you if you're Vanderbilt in this second half to continue to fight through that ball screen defense that Florida puts on you. And now Vandy's got an issue as Rod Odom just picked up his third foul. Kevin Stallings is not going to his bench. Basically because he doesn't have a lot of bench to go to. And the 16-39 is going to let Odom play through this and cross his fingers he doesn't get another foul. Wilberkin for three. Got it. Yeah, he is so hard to guard this year. I talked about his toughness, his balance that he plays with, and now he's really the most trusted three-point shooter that Billy Donovan has in conference play at 40%. He's shooting a better percentage than Frazier. Almost came up with a steal there, and they're having issues again. Now four. Wilbur can get back on him, but shoved him on the way to the basket. That's going to be his first foul. But I really think Scotty Wilbur if you were to ask Billy Donovan who's the most valuable player on his team, it's Scotty Wilbick, and therefore he will be the SEC Player of the Year. He plays with great base and balance when you watch his feet as an offensive player and a defensive player. He can dominate you with his toughness, and now he's a 39-40% three-point shoot. And if you're going to make a deep run in March or win the Final Four, as a head coach, Billy Donovan crouched down, you have to know what am I going to get out of my point guard every single night. He knows it with Wilbick. And whistle on the foul on the shot by Odom as we check in with Shannon. And when you guys talk about Scotty Wilbekin, obviously his defense is a huge story. The way he plays with so much fire, he told me that is what makes this team different than the other Gator team that he, teams that he's been a part of. He said they pride themselves on their defense, and because all of these guys were freshmen together and coming up through the ranks and on the second team against some of the veteran guys, that is what pushed their defensive game to the limit. That's what made them get to this point. He didn't stay on the bench long. Will looking comes back in and Prater will come out. Kevin Stallings sort of echoing what Shannon was talking about in his office today. He said, you know, these four starting seniors for Florida, they weren't big name guys. They weren't playing big time minutes when they were freshmen. They had hung together and stuck together. And now here they are as their senior years, the number one team in the country. Yeah, Brad, none of those four were, were buying into the instant gratification and instant results that so many young kids do today. And the result four years later, they're better players and they're better men. Nice rebound by Vanderbilt. Off the missed shot by Wilbekin. And they've got an opportunity to cut it down to six again. Fuller dribbling and a teardrop that won't fall. Frazier with the rebound. Smith had a notion from outside the arc. Now he'll take it this time and got it. Yeah, that's another trusted shooter. His, his percentage is not as good as the ball looks when it comes off of his wrist. The ball doesn't lie. And you watch his rotation and his release. Very good. runner on the window but that won't count there's going to be a foul before the shot on Fenny Smith Patrick Young was the enforcer early now the outside shots are dropped the other night <laughs> and now Florida's the new number one team in the country I'm sorry coach I had to take that shot well, you know all those teams are, are really top quality teams and several of them are a threat to win the whole thing Billy Donovan's club is is in that conversation as well Brad and what I like about his team if you have just one guy that's a jerk or a slacker or a pessimist on your ball club, it's not going to happen. Right. And Florida doesn't have one guy that you go to practice at any time and say, I don't like being around this dude. That is so, so important. When you say number one team, it is team for Florida. They do not have an individual superstar. They've got some guys that are, have moments when they can play like superstars, including Young and Wilbekin and Frazier when he gets hot. Right now, they're up 42-33. Respected of an official that we have in the college game right now is that young man right there. We'll miss you, Mike. 
And the two officials, Doug Chaz, the lead official tonight, Pat Adams, is here as well. We got three good ones. After the timeout, Benny Smith throws it away. Florida keeps turning it over just enough to leave the door open for the Commodores. And you need one of those 90 second 6 0 spurts to get Memorial Magic back in this building. Mm -hmm. Again, Kevin Stalling using Odom, his best shooter, as a screen. He probably understands that theory as well as anyone in this league. Odom's a guy that can knock down three in a row if he finds the right spot. Here's Moats going to try his second one of the night. It was halfway down and it came out. Underneath, Benny Smith off the feed from Prather and one. Or the counters that Florida has offensively, Brad, it's so difficult to defend. They do so much in the, the pro alley, the pro slot lane to initiate their ball screens. And if you corral it and come with it an extra step, the built-in throwback is there. And that's exactly what Vanderbilt does. They went with that dribbler just about one step too many. The slip to the rim, the bucket and the free throw. And the three-point play. And the biggest lead of the night. There's Vandy going to find its offense now. Trailing by 12. Odom is a guy down here in this bottom corner that needs to get loose. He's asking for it right now. Doesn't get a touch, but Jones does get touched by Yudet. That's three on Will Yudet. Patrick Young coming back in. Well, look at this Florida team. I always ask a question about a ball club. Can, can this month's version of you beat last month's version of you? And, and, and Florida can answer that question, yes. They've gotten better, and they still have a ways to go. I think the version of Florida in March will be better than the Florida version in uh, February. That's as good a look as Odom's had maybe all night if he missed it. The addition of Walker makes them better. I think their three-point shooting is going to continue in, to improve. Dorian Finney-Smith. Well, there's the non-conference start, and the conference has been perfect. Now, those numbers are awful steady, aren't they? You're holding sure opponents are. to blow 60 points a game all season long, and that field goal percentage again. A very unselfish defensive squad in terms of how they cover up for one another and how much they talk. The only talk after you make a shot, you are a selfish player and a selfish team, and that's not what Florida does. Number one in points per game defense, and number three in field goal defense, that 40% that you saw. You add those numbers up with the press and the way they grind you. Sometimes you think you're close. You get it to two or three, and all of a sudden you look up and it's 12, and there's just over 12 to go. Anytime somebody's made a run, and they have had some close games in the last two weeks. But they've always survived. And now they're trying to survive Memorial Gym tonight. Hold it. That time he got it. Now he's going to make some guarded shots on you. And if you're Kevin Stone, you, I think you keep force feeding this guy. You're not getting anything off of your ball screen action. So you're going to have to jump up and make some 16, 17 foot guarded shots to get back in this game. Yeah, I don't think Odom can quit shoot. Uh -uh. He might not be the hottest tonight, but he's still a guy that can put fear in you defensively. I like what Vandy's doing. They're not showing too much respect for the non-shooters on the floor. Casey Prather, 24, is a non-shooter. Terrific off of two bounces, well. Wilbekin, high off the window, battle for the rebound. This time's won by Vanderbilt. One of the few that Patrick Young hasn't muscled his way through. Jones trying to back in on Young. Throws it out. It's going to be over and back. If it doesn't go all the way to the baseline, and it will, it'll be Florida ball. Another costly turnover with 11.31 remaining in a 10-point game. Maybe like three times. Who? Geico. 
Brett, to me, Florida is very good in how they double the post, and they do it three different ways. They can come with a big and what they call monster, or if there's a cut that goes through, they'll come back and, and back trap off of the cut. Or the third option, when this ball is put down on the ground for the second bounce, this guard will scrape down, and that's what happens this time. They're the second bounce, boom, and then there they come. That's three ways that Florida, they get the ball off the post. The reason why they do that, they don't want their thin front line to pick up foul trouble, and they want to always be the aggressor defensively. But they have three different ways they do it, and they keep you guessing. And Vanderbilt found the 15th different way to turn it over. And now Wilbekin will inbound on the baseline. It's a 2-3 zone, and Kevin Stellings has a traditional 2-3 zone and a 2-3 zone that shapes to a point zone. This is the traditional 2-3 zone. Here's Frazier on the wing and Wilbekin to play there. They get it down on the baseline. The young reverse layup. Won't go. Rebound to Buffett. Right, it's almost like Kevin Stallings looks up and says, you know what? We're going to see if Florida will take and make enough threes the last 10 minutes of this game to beat us as he shrinks the floor with that 2-3 zone. Here comes the three from Vanderbilt, and it's good. Luke Cornett, that's Vanderbilt's sixth. Give him about five more, and they might be right in this thing. And the ball kicks with 10.34 remaining. We check in with Shannon. Brad, really two points of emphasis inside that Kevin Stallings bench. He told his guys, we have to rebound. And the second thing, we have to keep the ball out of Patrick Young's hands. Pretty simple. It's easier said than done, that's for sure. And rebounding has been a problem all year. Cornette hit that three at 10 points with a win over Auburn. And now Florida turns it over. And that's their 11th turnover. Brad, I like the zone by Vanderbilt. It's going to give him a chance in this game because you have to early recover to Wilbekin and Frazier and no one else. One of the last two games as number one. Lost to Vanderbilt seven years ago. Tonight with a 19-game winning streak still to be determined as we are halfway through the second half. Well, that's a good action. A, a, a double high flat ball screen and the second guy was a shooter, Cornette, popping to the top. Again, a very good offensive mind has Kevin Stallings. Five to shoot. Parker going to have to hurry. Odom's going to have to force one from way out. And he got it. He can make guarded shots. And the Memorial Magic is alive. So Vanderbilt knocks down a couple of threes from their big guys. First, Luke Cornett, a seven-foot freshman, and then the guy they look to, Rod Odom, at 6'9", just hit the last one. And it's a four-point game. Here's Brad, how they've done it. Brad, you told Kevin Stallings when we were up in his office earlier today, maybe this is the game you make 10 or 11 three-point shots. And he said, maybe we can make 12. And this last one is huge by Rod Odom again. Kevin Stallings has a seven-footer in Cornett, and a 6'8 guy in Odin that can make guarded shots. That's why they're always dangerous in this building. And the moral magic is right back at it. 45-41 for the 12-point lead down to eight. And they're shooting seven out of 14. They had 10 in the second half to come from behind to beat Auburn. 11 total over the weekend. There's no reason to run out at Casey Prather. 24 right down here at the bottom. Wilbekin, yes. Frazier, yes. Everybody else, sag off and be in your gaps in this zone. Young squares up from the baseline. Misses. Cornette will have the rebound. And he gave it away. Prather dishes. Vinny Smith off the window. And that is a major mistake, both defensively and offensively, if you will. This they had their yeah. hands on the basketball and just handed it back. A chance to go down and put all kinds of pressure on Florida. But the Gators are relentless. 
They will bait you and kind of take one step to the defensive end and then shoot back through a gap. Fournette wasn't ready for it, and a huge turn for Florida. That is two three-point plays for Fetty Smith and two three-point baskets for Fetty Smith. And that's a guy that doesn't start. I talked about it earlier. How many teams in the country could Dorian Finney-Smith be a starter for? Do you have starters that come off your bench? If you do, you're an elite club, and Florida has a couple of them. Finney-Smith, in fact, is their leading rebounder, believe it or not, and he's not a starter. Let's see now that Odom's feeling it, if he can find a way to get free. Here's Cornett. That's his second from the same spot. The freshman out of Lantana, Texas, whose daddy played here in the 80s, has lit up the crowd again. Frazier for three. Too strong. Rebound, Carter Josephs. And Hill can cut it to two as we approach eight minutes. Kevin Stallings has two guys with a size, Brad. Odom at 6'8", and Fournette at 7 foot, making guarded shots in this game. Not a good drive by Parker, but he kept it alive. Down at 15 on the shot clock, and we're under eight minutes. Kick out. Drawing a foul. Pray their bad defense there. But for Vanderbilt, they're going to the free throw line after the timeout to try to make it a two point game. 7.47 to go at Memorial Gym. We got a ball game. It's in about a half hour from now, Brad. All right, Chris, 48-44 going to the break. I said that Vanderbilt could cut it to a two-point game. They can actually cut it closer as we went back to see where that shot was taken by Parker, and he did get fouled outside the three-point line. Pat Adams, one of the officials, even came over and asked us. We don't have a great view here in our worm's eye view, so anyway, they're going to three throw line for three. I talked about the, how Kevin Stallings is using size. Keep an eye on Cornette right here, a seven-footer, Brad. He's going to actually get involved in a staggered screen and pops out of it. But because he was the top guy in the staggered screen, we didn't have it run back quite far enough. But it put pressure on Patrick Young to cover the shooter coming off the screen, then he got freed to pop out. Again, Kevin Stallings has an offensive mind now. When you throw certain looks at him defensively, he will have a counter for you. Walker has 11. He's got two more coming. Another Baton Rouge native. He's played 40 minutes eight times in league play. You talk about being an Iron Man. Let's check in with Shannon. Well, guys, I think every single coach in that Florida bench had something to say to those players. One word I heard over and over again, discipline. Coach Pelfrey also had something to say. He said, get to the ball early, give help early. We've heard that in shoot around many times this year. A couple of wasted opportunities from the free throw line. And Florida, quick shot on the other end, but a foul on Vanderbilt underneath. Shannon mentioned uh, John Pelfrey and his wife, Tracy Pelfrey, back home watching this game in Gainesville tonight. A couple weeks ago, she had a really major surgery on her hip, and John and, uh, talked to all of us today about his wife and how tough she has been, and really an inspiration to, to John and how she's battling through a difficult time in her life. And Tracy, we wish you the best, young lady. Absolutely. That was the sixth team foul on Vanderbilt, so Florida's going to be shooting from here on out. Wilbekin in traffic. Nice bounce pass underneath that you get. All because of the play of Wilbekin playing with a strong base. He gets into that paint grab, and he's never, he's never off balance when he gets a piece of the paint. At the seven-minute mark, it's top-ranked Florida by five. Don't forget Indiana and Wisconsin from the Big Ten follow us. Another three-pointer. This one won't go. One had it hit his last two.
Right now they're into the point zone, it looks like Vanderbilt is, because the guy on the ball behind it, it looks like a 1-3-1. North Carolina used it for years under Dean Smith. Lining the shot clock down to 10. You get over in the corner to Frazier. Now Wilberton probably will have to take it himself. Fade away. Battle for the rebound is won by Vanderbilt as Florida knocks it out of bounds. Well, we talked about Indiana and Wisconsin on ESPN following us and out on ESPN2. Quest for perfection continues. Wichita State taking on Bradley. Missouri Valley showdown tonight at 9 on ESPN2. Also live on Watch ESPN. Wichita State trying to build their own bracket up to a possible number one seed. I talked about how Wichita State and Louisville, a team I'll see Thursday night, are the only two teams in the country right now, top 20 in both offensive and defensive efficiencies. Why is that important? Eight out of the last 10 national champions had that in common. Odom, a contested three. Benny Smith cleared it ahead. Wow. Just when you think you've got everybody covered, Devin Walker knocks down his second three. And again, that swarming double team in the backcourt, and Vanderbilt's got to call a timeout. Or well, Florida just relentless in this ball game where they're forcing Vanderbilt to catch that out-of-bounds pass. So many times in this game, Vanderbilt has caught it within three or four feet of the out-of-bounds line. And Devin Walker, 28, 28 of his 32 attempts in conference play have been from three. He hasn't made a big percentage of them yet, but you look at the numbers, Billy Donovan sees something from that kid in practice that allows him to keep firing from three. And that Florida press has been hot in this ball game in terms of where they're forcing Vanderbilt to catch the first pass. Vanderbilt three timeouts remaining, Florida with two. We mentioned a short bench for Vanderbilt. Most minutes by starters in the SEC. By four minutes, they have Missouri in that category, and Tennessee and Kentucky. So basically, it's Fuller, Parker, Siakam, Odom, and Jones, but we have seen time from Cornette and Moach tonight, Josephs as well. Nathan Watkins hasn't played much. He played 16 minutes in the win over Auburn as they overcame a 16-point deficit in that game. I said to Kevin Stallings today, did you have those walk-ons playing extended minutes because you absolutely had to or because you were ticked off at your starters? <laughs> Didn't take him long to answer that. <laughs> no. Let's put it this way. Fuller and Odom sat for a good majority of the first half until they got the message and a good part of the second half until they got the message. Good job by Odom to realize the back pursuit is coming against Florida. If you dribble it more than twice on the same side of your body in the press breaker, Florida's going to tap it from behind. Odom with Wilbekin on him in the corner. Big size discrepancy there, but he's just kind of waiting for the ball to come around to him. Now he's got it. And he draws a double team. Parker got a three away. And another rebound for Finney Smith. And we're under five minutes. Again, the grinding of Florida. Even though Vanderbilt got it to it in three. And that's an eight-point game. Frazier. Short on the baseline three. You get kind of tip that to keep it alive. And a fresh shot clock for the Gators. Billy Donovan calling some quick hitters. Up eight on the road. Four and a half to go and call some quick hitting plays. Inside. Benny Smith can't connect. And there's going to be a foul on Florida. That's going to be on Yaget. And that is four on Yaget. Tell you what, I got to give these guys over to our left here at the scorer's table. We're on the same side as the scorer's table in kind of a rare situation because of Memorial Gym. Patrick Young was Patrick Young was sitting in front of the scorer's table, and they yelled at Patrick and said, hey, could you move to the side a little bit? Would you have said to Patrick Young, could you move to the side no, a little bit? No. He's been in front of me about six times. I'm not yeah. saying anything to him. Because he can move to the side, he's still in your way because of how big and broad his shoulders are. Watch this. This guy says, hey, Patrick, I can't see. I can't see. Whoops. Okay. I'll move a little bit. I'm telling you, one of the, one of the in terms of the number of retweets I've had on something, the picture today I took with Patrick Young with his biceps, things off the charts. I, I, and you're I, right, my arms are big. I, I still say you were so close. Now for a six-foot analyst. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, the <laughs> triceps aren't too small either, are they? <laughs> you said to Patrick today, you know, a lot of people say you should be a tight end. I've said it a hundred times. He said, anybody ever showed any interest? He said, no. He said, I would never play football. He said, I did hear a rumor that Lovey Smith was kind of asking if I'd be interested, though. Yeah. The new coach of the Buccaneers. There's a lot of NFL teams would be asking that same question. Then he either asked him, what do you want to do when you get through playing ball? I said, I want your job. I said, okay, you yeah, have it in about 10 it. years. Or the ministry. I want to get into the ministry. Yeah. That's that's who Patrick Young is. That's a good combination. You've been preaching to me for about eight years. Absolutely. And you've been listening to the last two. Yeah. Crowd the action. Down the action. Florida does it all within one possession. Jones. Nice little one-hand hook by Damian Jones. to a two-possession game right now. Vandy can hang their hat on that as we're under four minutes. But if they can get a stop. There's no way Vandy could win this game if it got into the 70s. They have it, at least in terms of the pace of where they won. Here's Young, all the double team. Hook shot is short. Commodores with the rebound. Siakam. And now Fuller's going to run it up against Young and got it. Well, Fuller's gotten a little loose of the basketball three or four times in this ball game. But again, his speed against that Florida press two or three times has paid off. He can make it a three-point game again if he hits the free throw after this timeout. Vandy hanging tough. 316 to go. They are both holding the guy they're guarding to under 30% shooting from the field. Terrific individual defenders and a terrific team defense. Kyle Fuller, Jim will quiet for his free throw. Attempt at a three-point play, and he's got it. And it's a three-point game. 3.15 to go. A lot of threes in there on Super Tuesday. Kevin Stallings back man-to-man, -man, not giving Florida a steady diet of any defense right now. Making Florida think a little bit, making him hesitant. As a result, only 14 on the shot clock when they come to the ball screen. Remember, Wilbekin is facing his coach right now, Billy Donovan, on that baseline. Down to five on the shot clock. Wilbekin, fade away. Tough shot. Battle for the rebound. It'll be a foul, I think, on Siakam on the baseline. He got hooked up underneath, trying to get the rebound, and he picks up the foul. You'll see he and... Dorian Finney Smith get their arms tangled up underneath. And Finney Smith will go to the free throw line. Dorian Finney Smith won that battle from the waist down because Siakam probably outweighs him by 20, 25 pounds. But he won the battle from the waist down and therefore got the seal off. Remember, it's a one and one, got the first. So he's hit three of four in this half from the free throw line. How about Vanderbilt shooting the basketball against Florida? They're shooting 51% in the game. The problem is... Not getting enough shots. They're taking 37 shots because they turned it over 16 times. All right, the second one comes out, so he got one out of that, and it's a four-point game. Can Vanderbilt go to the rest of this game without a turnover? If they can, we're going to have ourselves one of those last possession deals. They can go the rest of the game without a turnover. They have two more, two, two more threes. They might win this thing. They don't need threes right now. They're only down four, but their inside game is almost non-existent. The handler in the ball screen action hasn't gotten anything done tonight for Vanderbilt. It's been the slip out guy. Turned by Jones on the baseline. He at least got the rim, but the rebound is Prather's. Florida. We're going to work under two minutes now. Florida so good, Brad, defensively. They sniff everything out. They corral the action. They recover. They talk. They help again. An unselfish defensive club, the Florida Gators. Playing with a four-point lead. Clock's in their favor. Down to 140. Young leaves it to Prather. A little miscommunication there, and the ball's still loose. Shot clock. Wilbergen just has to hoist it. Almost went in off the glass of the rebound. Dave John Parker, 125 to go. Still a four-point game. That was one awkward possession. 
They couldn't get out of their own way on the inside. By the time they got up to the outside, Wilbekin was 30 feet away with a second to shoot. Let's see if Vandy can get any better offense going. Rod Odom trying to be a screener and run through the elevator. And Kevin Stallings has three timeouts left. Did not like at all what it was shaping up to look like. And with that, he takes a timeout. Well, Florida, the last time they were number one. They won 17 straight, needed a win to clinch at least to share the SEC East. There it's in the SEC at 14-0. Number one in the country at 25-2. And, and there's the rest of the group. Georgia in the number three spot at 9-5, and five, Kentucky 11-3, and three, and then there's seven, seven and sevens. Fuller. And he's fouled. They go to the line. You get picks up the foul, and that might be it for Will You Get. Is that four or five? That's five on You Get. And Billy Donovan puts Scotty Wilbekin, a point guard, on Rod Odom and says, read the play, sniff it out, and don't let Odom get a look. Now you see Odom's a second guy and a low man in the stack, and watch Wilbekin. He knows he's going to get down screen, he fights through it, and therefore forces Vanderbilt to make a hard drive to the rim. Scotty Wilbekin, the best defender, in this in this conference and I'm going to say as good of a point guard defender as we have in the college game there's no separation between he and Aaron Kraft defensively and this kid's a better offensive player in his senior season Gainesville native who played at the rock in Gainesville came in very young in his college career still only 20 he's a senior a minute to go and Kyle Fuller's going to the free throw line don't forget Journey to the tourney continues on ESPN2. Spotlight on the impact games in Wichita State. Perfect right now. Can Bradley pick off and shock Wichita State? That's on ESPN2 at 9 o'clock. So here comes two huge free throws. Fuller, the senior out of Moreno Valley, California. He's another guy that's played five times all 40 minutes in SEC games with that short bench. Trying to make it a two-point game and does. 54-52. Florida's half-court offense has left the building over the last couple of minutes. There it is, the last 540, 0 for 5. What do they go to? Who do they go to? Scotty Wilbekin has been the closeout guy for Billy Donovan so far this year. And don't you think the Vandy defense knows that? 15 on the shot clock, 40 to play. Florida by two. Wilbekin draws a crowd, gets it to Finney Smith for three, and he got it! Big time play. Vanderbilt corralled the action, and Billy Donovan slipped the screener to the far side. And the toughness of Scotty Wilbekin to get the ball where it absolutely had to go because they had a hard corral on Wilbekin when he came off the ball screen, Brad. But again, a determined, tough guy. I said earlier, Wilbekin can whip you with his toughness at the end of the day. Watch the corral. They have him corralled pretty good, but he knows I've got to get the ball reversed. Jumps up, elevates, throws a strike to a shooter. Bam! Big time offense out of Wilbekin and the Florida Gators. And Finney Smith, his third three of the night. Not a starter and the leading scorer right now for the Gators. Do you know what you're going to get out of your point guard once March begins? Well, Billy Donovan knows. Greg Marshall at Wichita State, he knows what he's going to get out of Fred Van Vliet. I think Jim Beheim knows what he's going to get out of Tyler Ennis. But this Wilbekin kid, you can win a national title with him and these other three cool seniors that Billy Donovan has on the floor. Benny Smith has led the way now for Florida. 19 points on 6 of 11 shooting, 3 out of 6 outside the arc, and he's led him in rebounds again with 9. Stats just sort of roll up for yeah, that kid, don't they? Absolutely. Fandy cannot turn this ball over. They have to go down and get a quick, good look. 2 or 3 doesn't matter. Just cut it to a one-possession game. Here's Fuller as we approach the 22nd mark. He's going to try to drive, and he got it up and in. Well done, Brad. Spread the floor with shooters. Cornette on one side, Odom on the other. And trust the speed and the blow-by ability of Fuller. And that time, Fuller, and that's the best driver that Kevin Stallings has. Now, Wilbekin's not on him because Wilbekin is chasing the most lethal shooter in Odom. So it's not best on best. It's best on pretty good. Fuller on a pretty good defender, Prather. And Vanderbilt has cut this thing to a one-possession one game. 
Now remember, Florida hasn't lost in almost three months. Take you back to December, early December against UConn. And that shot won it for the Huskies. That's the last time Florida hasn't had to talk about a loss. They've had some close encounters for sure in recent weeks. They're in another tight one right now. But something that didn't happen to Florida last year. They had close games. They couldn't win them. Right now, they're 12 and 2 this year in games decided by single digits. They're 3 and 1 in games decided by two or fewer points. And we're right about in that area right now with 18.7 to go. Brad, that's a sign of an older team, a veteran team. That's a time of a the sign of a competitive team. You close out a ball game, I think, by putting your five most competitive dudes on the floor. And for Billy Donovan, four of his five most competitive dudes are seniors. They get it into Wilbur He's the guy that took so many huge free throws already this year to close out games. They can't even catch him right now. He sidesteps everybody, and they finally foul him with 10 seconds to go. That play, to me, tells you a lot about Scotty Wilbekin. He knows, in terms of what's on the floor, he's the second best free throw shooter they have. Frazier's the best guy, but this kid's at 82%. And he had that thing 10, 11, 12 bounces. He kept it low in traffic. And his toughness and his determination gets himself to the free throw strike. He saved almost three seconds out there, Jimmy, just by backing up and sidestepping the defender. And Absolutely. they couldn't get to him. Absolutely. Just smart basketball. Hasn't been to the stripe tonight, but he's hit some huge ones. And the last two and a half weeks that we've seen him, he's had career highs in points three different times because of his free throw shooting. That one comes out. Still a chance. Three-point game. Timeout. With 6.6 .6 remaining. And now Vanderbilt needs one of those all-important threes that we were talking about. Before we see how this one ends, let's send it back to the studio and Chris Cornett, Odom, and Moats. So he has shooters with size. Odom is 6'8", Cornett 7 foot, Moats is 6'8". They can make a guarded shot against good defense. Cornette, the tallest three-point shooter out there. And around a pick, they're going to throw it cross-court to him. He'll hand it off. Fuller, three to tie. No good. Stick back. Likewise, Florida survives the Commodores, and they survive Memorial Gym. And they have won 20 straight, and they're still number one. Brad, how about the trust of Billy Donovan to not even consider fouling and trust his defense? to switch out on everything, to cover up all the action 94 feet away from his bench. This is a Florida team. We talked early. Does it finally just catch up to them? They've won 19 in a row. And that's a pretty good look. Patrick coming a little late into the recovery. And Florida stays number one for now. Wow. They battled until the final light and the final buzzer. Florida survives again. They are 26-2, 15-0. They've wrapped up a share of the SEC title with a three-point win as we head to Madtown and Mike Tirico. Michael.